Welcome to the Connect to Engage video chats. This show is all about communication and how critical it is across industries and professions. My name is Jennifer Murphy, and the goal for each video chat is to bring you thought-provoking conversations and expert perspectives all around communication. So for this session, we for each session, excuse me, we will invite professionals from different industries to give their stories and experiences surrounding communication, what works, what doesn't work, in order to accomplish tasks and make connections, to be successfully engaged with others in their personal and professional lives. Today, we are wel welcoming small business owners, and you're going to hear about a small business and the journey in starting the small business. We're going to talk in depth about effective communication, and why it's essential for a prosperous and rewarding career. So I am very excited to welcome Yvette Shaheen from Pixel Pages Photography. Hi, Yvette. Hi. Um, I would like to just hear about your small business and why you got into it. Okay. Um, in my small business, I celebrate high school seniors and families with thoughtfully created one-of-a-kind portrait sessions that capture the authentic spirit of your senior and family with heirloom quality artwork. I got into this because I enjoy taking, taking photos, mm -hmm. capturing truly authentic images and emotions, and I also really enjoy connecting with my clients and building mm -hmm. those relationships. Okay. So you take photographs, like portrait sessions Correct. with seniors in high school and tell me like how that works. What, how, what does that process look like? For me, they, it begins with a consult that a potential client will schedule with me. And during the consult, we go over what portrait sessions are like. It's starting that foundation of a relationship with these clients okay. because I'm going to be spending a lot of time with them and mm -hmm. I want them to feel comfortable with me and just let their guard down because being in front of a camera is very awkward. Mm -hmm. We also then meet together and have a style console where we go over what their ideas are for their dream session and the clothing and the location mm -hmm. and giving them ideas on what they want to do. I have to kind of pull or tease those out of them. Then we have a portrait session where we take all the lovely pictures. And <laughs> <laughs> how long does that, how long typically does that take? That takes about two hours for my okay. high school seniors, closer to two and a half. Um, yeah because I'm talking to them, making them comfortable. We discuss posing, mm -hmm. we have outfit changes, sometimes mm -hmm. location changes. Then mm -hmm. after the session, a week or two later, we will have their session reveal. And that's where they see a slideshow of all their images. And then oh, they fun. place an order for their artwork. And okay. then the behind the scenes stuff goes on with the editing placing orders for their photos, albums, and then I deliver those four to six weeks later. Wow. And it, I mean, this is a completely different setup than when the students go and take their pictures in front of, you know, like a professional, like for their yearbook, right? Yes. It's, it's a, yeah. Talk to me about that. Um, the difference is, and I've, I've lived it because I have a daughter who graduated from high school two years ago. When you go into a studio that does your child's senior portrait, that's usually for the yearbook. High schools often contract with a portrait studio. Um, that makes it very easy for the high school because they're getting all their images from one place. Everything's cohesive and consistent for the yearbook. Mm -hmm. And you have about 20 minutes where you're in, out, you kind of sit, you do this, yeah. you take the different angles, and then you're done. Yes. So it doesn't capture a lot of the seniors' personality, their individual mm -hmm. interests. Mm -hmm. When you work with a boutique studio, we are usually spending a lot of time getting to know you so that mm -hmm. that authenticity comes out and kids are giving those smiles that their moms and dads know and love. Like that's what they want on their own walls when their child has moved away, gone to college and 
you're sitting there crying and you, you <laughs> want your baby on the wall and, and, and you don't want that poor smile. Yes. Okay. So this video series is all about communication and what that means to different industries. We're talking to you. You own a small business. Talk to me about your the role of effective communication in your day-to-day operations. Um, probably there's two things that are most important. One is branding. Mm-hmm. I have to have very effective communication with that so that everything is always consistent. Um, so when I'm talking to clients, whether it's via an email, social media, blog post, it always sounds like me. Mm -hmm. I'm communicating an effective message. They know what kind of portrait studio I am before they even walk in the door. Mm -hmm. Um, And so they also get to know me and have an idea of what to expect. Um, You want to speak with your target client daily so that Mm -hmm. they're engaging with you. Um, Not every person wants the product I have to offer. So when I'm speaking to my brand and talking to that target client, that helps my business be more effective because when you talk to everyone, you talk to no one. Got it. Okay. And second, it's um, in my business aspect, it is communicating policies, practices, letting my clients know exactly what to expect, Mm -hmm. um, what I do, what I don't do, helping them prepare for their portrait session so that Mm -hmm. they can have a successful portrait session. Um, It's building trust. And so when they're in front of my camera, they know that this is a very safe space and that they have the opportunity to veto anything that, you know, I suggest. I just really want especially my high school seniors, um, Mm -hmm. to feel comfortable and feel like this is space, this space is safe. And that all comes from trust. And that trust is built via communication. When you're talking to me about branding on, on one hand, and then that clear policies and procedures on the other hand, that must come in different modes. So I know there's, there's probably a website, there's probably emails and there's text communication, verbal, on the phone. How do all of those play a role in making sure that those messaging, those two areas that you were talking about are clear? Um, is Do you use the same words? Do you say, do you, is the, how is the messaging similar across those platforms? I try to make it very explicit, very concise, um, and consistent. I don't think you can just say something one time and people will hear it. Um, Mm -hmm. I think it needs to come from multiple avenues. We're all busy. We have a tendency to skim things. So it's repeating it over and over in a clear yet engaging way. And I think it also, you need to make sure that you say it with love so Mm -hmm. that they know that you're not as a woman, it's hard. We feel, we don't want to be, feel like we're being bossy. So I always try Mm -hmm. to say it with, you know, kindly, um, so that they feel welcomed. Yes. Well, and your business lends itself to, like you were saying, these moment, the mementos of in it, that's going to be, that are going to be hanging in people's homes for years and years and years. And they mean something. There's some emotion behind your profession. Um, and you're giving people, um, these memories that, that they're going to have forever <laughs> in a way. <laughs> so like we said, this effective communication, effective communication can either make or break a business. So tell us about a time when there was a, a super vital success or an epic failure in your business in regards to communication. Um. Speaking to failures, I think I had a very difficult time the first seven or so years to effect effectively communicate. And I had a client who we took pictures and within two days, it's when are my photos going to be done? And that created a lot of stress 
because all mm. of a sudden I'm feeling like, oh, I really have to get these done. I didn't mm. tell them an, a timeline. And okay. that it it's it takes a lot of work to edit your photos and to make them perfect. And that put a lot of stress on my plate. And there were mm-hmm. some, a couple late nights where I just wanted to make my client happy. And yes. that all could have been taken care of had I effectively communicated everything beforehand. So trial and error, essentially in the beginning. Yes. And gaining confidence, feeling like I was an expert and that I knew what I was talking about, um, that I had built a brand and a reputation, Mm -hmm. um, and learning when you set boundaries and policies in place. Mm. It makes everybody happy. Your client knows exactly what to expect and they Mm. don't feel like you've just taken their photos and disappeared. They know what every step of the process is. You're making me think of how communication, the, the tone, the words, the emotion behind your communication changes when you're confident versus when you're, um, not confident. Do you feel like your communication has changed throughout the years? You know, like I said, just the way that you sound and the words that you say? Yes. Oh, yes. And that confidence also came with people actually saying to me, well, you know what you're doing. (laughs) Okay, I trust you. And then I realized, oh, I am the expert. So what? and when you have confidence, people trust you. Mm. Yes. Yeah, you have confidence in order to be a fab a fabulous photographer, and then you do an amazing job. Yes. Yeah. Um. Okay. What do you think is the biz- biggest mistake in your industry, in the small business industry, not just photography, but in small business when it comes to communication? Um, setting effective policies and boundaries. Mm-hmm. I see. And this could be for all small businesses. I do see it a lot in photography um, groups where people are, photographers are scared because they they didn't effectively communicate all the information to their client. And now their clients are asking for either crazy edits on, you know, can you just change everything in the photo? And (laughs) <laughs> and when you don't explain to a client what you do and don't do, <laughs> how do you explain that after the fact? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's also important, like I would say, because you're setting boundaries too with, I'm very protective of my weekends now and my time. Mm-hmm. So letting my clients know that, yes, you are important to me, but unless I have a photo session on a weekend, I only answer phone calls and emails Monday through Friday, like normal business hours. Mm Because if you don't set those boundaries, you do have people texting you at 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. on a Sunday night asking you a photo-related question. So I always like to just state those policies. Mm -hmm. And um, it, again, helps your client have appropriate expectations on what to expect. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Well, it sounds like that the idea of communication for connection, which is Mm -hmm. part of the title of the series, (laughs) you seem to have gotten that through because you you understand how critical that is when there is a miscommunication, then talk about that. Talk about the miscommunication and then the lack of connection for that, for your business. Um. Well, I think clients are making an investment, whether it's in family portraits or senior portraits. And especially with the high school seniors, this is a massive milestone moment. Mm -hmm. And effective communication is just crucial because you want those kids comfortable. You want their parents confident that they made the right choice and are going to the right photographer. And if they hear other parents complaining about mm. the photographer there t- that took 
the other child's photo, you want your family to say, oh, well, I had a great experience. My photographer explained mm -hmm. everything clearly. Mm -hmm. My son or daughter knew exactly what to do. And they walked mm -hmm. into the session prepared and for them to feel confident. Yes. Um, they knew we had a plan. Um, so it just makes the entire experience positive friendly, professional, and your client knows that they are your top priority. And that is key in having a successful business. Excellent. Th this is, um, this is, I think, important for not only the, the business that you're in, but other small businesses as people build their own business and, and build it to where they are um, well-known and respected in the industry that they're in. So I appreciate that. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna throw a little fun question at you just for, <laughs> you know, why not? Um, so if you could have a superpower for just one day, now you don't get it for you the rest of your life, <laughs> what would it be and how would you use it? I would have to say, I mean, it's going to be the most generic answer, but it is very true. It would probably be the superpower of flying. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people say that. Um, <laughs> so cool. It, it would be amazing. It, it would just to see everything from literally a bird's eye view. Yes. To just fly off to some more remote place that you can't get to by car <laughs> and immerse myself in nature, hang out in some trees with birds. And let's be honest, I'll be taking aerial photos too. <laughs> yes. You take your camera. camera, take your camera with you. That's absolutely true. <laughs> well, uh, that concludes our first episode of the connect to engage video chat series. Um, I certainly hope that everyone found this, uh, exploration and roles and role of communication within small business um, rewarding and the journey of communication skills in different industries does not end here. We're going to, um, invite other professions to, to have a similar conversation to, to the one I just had with Yvette. And I, we're, we're interested to hear what different industries say about communication. So viewer feedback, questions, suggestions, just fuel, uh, our motivation and, and shape the future of the video chat series. So reach out, through social media channels and the website at connecttoengage.com. And Yvette, I'd love to hear your website. If you wouldn't mind, do you, are, you, are you comfortable sharing that? It's pixelpagesphotography.com. Pixelpagesphotography.com. Um, I, I thank you so much. My, dear, my deepest appreciation to you, Yvette, for spending the time and out of your very busy life. <laughs> to, to share communication experiences. Um, it's just been um, a joy to hear about your journey and we appreciate you being part of, of the communication community in a way. Um, for, for the listeners, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and turn on the notifications so that you do not miss a future Connect to Engage video chat. Make sure to share the series with others who are as curious and passionate about communication as we are. We hope you've learned something and we will see you next time. All right. I just wrapped up my interview with small business owner, Yvette Shaheen, and I'm here with my two co-hosts. Again, my name is Jen Murphy and I am a small business owner of Clear and Confident Speech Coaching. And I want to introduce uh, my other two co-hosts. Guys. Hi. Hi, I'm Adrian with Online Speech Services. And I'm Sonia Satikoli with the Global Speech Suite. What's interesting about our unique professions is both are all Adrian and Sonia and I are all speech and language pathologists by trade, but have um, also have another role as, as um, corporate communication speech coaches and trainers. So, uh, and another interesting fact is we are, we span the United States of America. So I'm on the West Coast and Sonia's in the Chicago area and Adrian is on the East Coast. So we bring a diverse variety of um, cultural differences in regards to where we live and also our experiences as, as uh, speech co coaches and trainers. So guys, 
uh, talk to me about what you kind of your takeaways from from Yvette and that small business owner communication um, field. What do you guys think? Well, I saw a lot of parallels with what Yvette does and what we do, which is very interesting if you're looking at small business owners, but within different industries. She talked yeah. about that first consultation. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's exactly what I do. Just getting to know your clients. And that obviously involves a lot of active listening skills and just being mm -hmm. a good communicator to make that connection with them. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, what do you think, Sonia? Yeah. So when I was listening to the chat and I love the conversation, there was a few words that stood out to me right when when she said them or when uh, they came up in conversation or that were repeated multiple times throughout the conversation. So I just wanted to kind of run through that list and put them into relation as how we see communication as a base of a small business uh, ownership and relationship. So authenticity, which is huge and important, and that came up multiple times. Relationships, which is absolutely what you need to do as a photographer <laughs> and as a small business owner, no matter what you're doing. Um, foundation. We all, I know that the three of us as mm -hmm. Connect to Engage truly believe that communication is at the foundation of any good relationship. And so that was brought up multiple times. Um, and then I thought it was interesting as a small business owner, she was talking about communication, effective communication as part of her branding yes. and building that trust and those expectations of mm -hmm. her boundaries. Once she had the confidence, that was the last word that I wrote down. Once she yeah. had the confidence to know what her skill set, her value, her expertise was, but then setting those boundaries to bring apart, you know, those outcomes and build that trust with um, those developing relationships with her customer base. So I, I loved all of it. And those were the things that stood out for me. Didn't you find it interesting that when she said, uh, I wrote it down, that she had a difficult time for those first seven years with effective communication because she was a little unsure about um, certain things of her own business and how to run it. And the fact that she had to, okay, I didn't set clear expectations of my policies and procedures. So that was a mistake. So now, and she kind of implemented those communication strategies throughout her career. And, and she said that kind of her tone changed and the way that she communicated changed. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. I think that's a big mind shift for a lot of small business owners, having the confidence mm -hmm. to set clear expectations and then being able to communicate that effectively. Just thinking about, okay, I've been working for someone all these years and now I'm the one who's responsible for coming up with all of these policies and procedures. But also if I don't, what is the outcome? And she mm -hmm. found out very early on what mm -hmm. you know the potential downfall is of not having that clearly communicated in advance. And that spans across industries. You have to have those policies in place and then you have to be confident enough to actually implement them. Hmm. And I think along those same lines, what I found interesting was when Yvette was talking about, you know, her niche market, right? She discovered what her niche market was, who her target audience was, partially due to she wanted to set boundaries, right? She, um, mm -hmm. you know, knew that she could offer value to a certain audience. And so being able to communicate that, I think mm -hmm. off, you know, right off the cuff, lets their audience members know, or her customers set, know what to expect and what the expectations are. And it serves her in the purpose of setting her boundaries and having that work-life balance that she needs and getting joy out of yes. what she's doing and not trying to please everybody, um, right. but really making it worthwhile for her customers and herself. Made me think, also think of not only her communication out, but when she talked about the communication coming in, because she was saying, didn't she, the part where she was saying she gained confidence as she built her business, but also as people started to say, wow, you really know what you're doing. And then they're like, so, so kind of as, as people are listening, giving kudos to, 
um, small business owners as opposed to staying silent, right? Like if you know a small business owner and you appreciate their work and you appreciate their value, communicate that, you know, tell people, wow, I really love your store. Um, I really love your, uh, the service that you provide. I think that that sometimes is missing. I don't know if you guys experience that, that also. Yeah. I, and Jen, to your point, I think both ways too, right? So things that you appreciate, yes, it's definitely as a small business owner, you want to hear that. And now in the day of, you know, getting reviews and testimonials for, mm -hmm. for your marketing purposes, that's right. always helpful and needed. However, I think the contrary too. So when, when Yvette was talking about a situation where, you know, she was meeting a deadline and working herself crazy because mm -hmm. expectations and outcomes were not communicated clearly enough. Right. And so taking that feedback from yes. the client, you know, I think that helped her grow and helped her make some policy revisions and changes to her practice and to her business. And one other thing that I really liked was when she talked about building trust, yes. right? So building trust early on with the client, getting to know them, letting them know they're in a safe space. And that's mm -hmm. all about, you know, building that trust and that relationship is at the core of that success of your business as well. It's going to let you know, hopefully help them be a repeat customer, but also let you get that word of mouth marketing, like, oh my goodness, she was awesome. Not just skilled, but as a person and having that relationship mm -hmm. and trust. Right. And I think she spoke about talking to them on a regular basis, her customer before the actual shoot, right? Mm -hmm. So yes. you're getting to know what it is that your customer, who your customer is by constant communication. And that brings about that authenticity and builds that relationship and inevitably that trust. Well, I think that that kind of uh, hopefully gives a little bit of an insight of what communication is in this specific industry, but also the goal for this video series is going to be what does communication mean for different industries? And so I'm really excited to kind of launch each session we meet a different industry and invite different professionals in and hear what communication means to them. Um, the goal is to let people know that to us, communication means connection and engagement and hence the name, but, um, but also that uh, communication runs so many different facets of your own life. So uh, making sure that you're aware of your communication and not just kind of going through your day and, and not thinking about how you're communicating. So um, with that, I think that it was, I am, I'm happy with the very first session. I thought it went really, really well. And, um, and I hope that people get some value out of it. Yes, make sure you tune in and subscribe so you see our next conversations that we have with various industries, please. We look forward to connecting and engaging with you <laughs> soon and often. Bye.